Welcome to One ABQ and You, Conversations, Culture, and Community, a City of Albuquerque production with your hosts, Mayor Tim Keller and me, Leah Black. Thank you so much for joining us again. Welcome back to another episode. We're back here at One ABQ and You, and we're so excited to be joined by our, our own celebrity chef. That's right. Okay, celebrity chef, you have competed on numerous TV shows. You've won numerous awards, four-time winner for Best Chef in the City, New Mexico Restaurant Association Chef of the Year, and you are the current executive chef slash partner at Hotel Chaco. Welcome, Mark Quinones. Thank Thanks. you for having yeah. me. Yeah. No, pleasure to be here. Thanks for Honor. being on. Uh, how did you get into uh, having a love of food and knowing that you wanted to create? Oh, goodness. I've been cooking my whole life. You know, Take um, us like way back, though. Yeah, yeah. Are you, talking, are you talking ramen noodles when you're three? <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. So that's all my kids cook. <laughs> So we came, love it. we came to New Mexico full time when I was 13 years old. So I'm born and raised in the Bronx, New York. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. My mom's Puerto Rican, you know, so I'm raised by my mom and my grandma. And I was always around food. So, you know, during the holidays, really anything that was going on in the kitchen, I was super like involved, yeah. engaged, mm-hmm. asking a million questions, being, being told to kind of wait, you know, wait, don't eat yet, you know, don't touch that. You're like picking at you the know, food. I was and always the, yeah. super into it. And I remember, uh, I remember this for like, Vividly, I was eight years old, and my mom told me how to make turkey wings. Because, you know, during the holidays, mm. Thanksgiving, the yeah, turkey, yeah. I always loved the wing. So I would always fight for the wings. I wanted both of them. And my <laughs> mom, we went to the supermarket, and she, was, she would buy the pack of turkey wings, and she taught me how to marinate them and then to roast them. I was eight years old. Never forgot wow. that. That's crazy. So we came to New Mexico um, when I was 13. I, right over here is a Washington Middle School, like right oh, down yeah. the street on Park Avenue. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And... Um, uh, during high school, I started working the fast food circuit immediately, and you know a lot it's of people don't know It's a perfect high this. school job. Oh, big time! Yeah, and most people don't know, but that's like my I mean, super humble beginnings. Like my my first job ever was at the Wendy's right here on University and Central. No oh, way! Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it's still there. Yeah, one hundred percent. That was my first job. Yeah, um, I was a sophomore at Albuquerque High. And then I ended up at the at the Wendy's in Old Town, Rick, right right over here. Yeah, right, yeah, big like time. A block yeah, away I from go Hotel Chaco. I go to that one by my house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and this may, I'm, I'm not even exaggerating it. I mean, I, it ran the gamut from Taco Bell. I got fired from Taco Bell. I love this story. Uh, <laughs> KFC on San Mateo and Osuna. McDonald's. Oh, nice. on, on I've been to all those. McDonald's, <laughs> uh, Domino's. I mean, I, I just literally ran the fast food it's, gamut in high school. It's probably for another so, podcast, but I want to know the story of why you got fired from Taco Bell. Can we talk about that or no? Uh, that's, I, I, you want to know the truth? I was talking back to the manager. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was a Sunday morning. I was just I was just in a bad mood. You know, I was I think yeah. I was like my junior year and, you know, had a big mouth and, you know. Teenage they, they, boy. 100 percent. Yeah. So I, I, they, yeah, they told me yeah. to kick rocks. <laughs> I, that really happened. And then look what happened later. You, you had no idea flash forward to the future that you'd be doing your own thing you know but we got it before but this is amazing because tell us tell us what what like all right what you still learned from fast food that is relevant that has stayed with you yeah yeah to your modern yeah i'm just curious you know well two words come to uh uh, come to mind speed and focus okay you know what i mean repetition you know so when when you apply those um you know, those words to, you know, and I hate the term fine dining, but, you know, if you're at a higher level restaurant, you right. know, it's really, it comes down to those fundamentals, you know, yeah. at, at the end of the day. But, um, wow. no, so after Love high it. school, you know, I, I really wanted, in my mind, I wanted to go back to New York, you know, I, I, I wanted to cook in the big city. Um, and I had these flashy thoughts, but when I went back to New York, I was 19. I graduated, um, um, it was like May, I want to say May 15, 2000. I went back to New York like 10 days later. You wow. know, on a Greyhound bus, true story. And I started washing dishes. Like, I thought I was going to go out there and work in these fancy <laughs> restaurants, and it never really happened. Yeah. You know, mm. I, I spent a long time working in Manhattan. You have to but, pay your dues. But for, for a temp agency. Okay. Mm. So mm. I, I would wake yeah. up in the Bronx at uh, 4, 4.30 in the morning. Um, I'd walk all the way down um, uh, Hunts Point Avenue, take the 6 train to 125th in Harlem, transfer to the 4 train, Take that to Grand Central Station. Oh, my gosh. And the TEP agency was called Flick. And it was on 41st and Pershing, one block over from Grand Central. So I'd be down there by 6 in the morning, and I'd pick up a little green slip, and he'd send me to a random kitchen in the city. And the first one was on 1 Wall Street in the Bank of New York building, the last stop on the 6th train. Whoa. Wow. Is this fancy? Um, is no. This, no. Okay. In the, in the cafeteria. <laughs> deli. Okay. So yeah. I heard. Not even, okay. Yeah. And, and the underbow. Like, if you go down there, there's a basement, and that's where the dishwashing area is at. Okay. And that kitchen would feed, you know, um, the employees. It was a big cafeteria. Huh. 
I mean, and I got to imagine that building. It's the Bank of New York headquarters. I got to yeah, imagine yeah. it has thousands of people oh, in yeah. that building. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what's a full service situation that runs 24 hours mm -hmm. a day? Um, think of it like a, like like an EDR, an employee dining room, but like a restaurant. Okay. Yeah, you know what I they mean. They probably okay. had multiple levels. Like they had the executive dining room, and then they had. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that because yeah. uh, fast forward the clock a little bit, still through the agency, I started getting like uh, line cooking job, prepping jobs. Okay. And I ended up at, at Philip Morris, which is uh, the tobacco company, their headquarters. Oh. And I ended up in their corporate dining room. It was I want to <laughs> say like on the twenty fourth floor or something like sure. that. Sure. Okay. I remember the sous chef took me up there. I was again down in the cafeteria doing my thing, but I was prepping at the time, not dishwashing. He's like. Hey, let, let's go upstairs. Help me out, because he saw I was always super focused into what I was doing. You know, any task they would give me, I'd be the first to raise my hand. You know what I mean? So, yeah. whenever there was always a, um, an opportunity for you know to get tapped on the shoulder to do something extra or for a promotion, I was usually first in line. Mm -hmm. uh, through just I was Good always job. I was always You're available. Hustling. Always yeah, available. Yeah. So I started going upstairs, and that's when I found like ooh. Like, there's levels to this dining yeah, thing. Yeah, literally yeah. and figuratively. <laughs> it's like, I just remembered, in, in, I worked in New York just for like a year, and the office building thing is like its own thing, right? Because everyone commutes in and you're there all day. And so, yeah, there, I was like, wow, there's like four dining rooms. I'm like, I can only go into one. You know, it's <laughs> like, like I'm not but it's like every one of those huge skyscrapers is like its I own city, you know, like just inside. Yeah. They have their own dry cleaners. They have their own, you know, whatever. It's really interesting. It's crazy. Uh, and like you, you never, this. you would never know that unless no. you like happen to be in them. Yeah. I mean, I, I so, you, so you're doing this and then, and then like, how does this lead back to New Mexico? So it's. If it wasn't true, it wouldn't be true. I just tell you. That. So, <laughs> one of the chefs that I was working for, and this is right around, um, not too long after 9/11. You know, I was in the city when that happened. I was working that morning. Oh, wow. Um, but one of the chefs I worked for, believe it or not, he had a sister who lived in Gallup. Okay. So huh. we were always talking about New Mexico, right? Yeah, crazy I, I connection. To, I had went to high school out here. He had a sister in Gallup. Yeah, of all you places, know, it's so small. Yeah. Yeah. So just the that connection was so just ironically, you know, was what it was. But my mom's out here, I got family out here, and I was always kind of talking about Albuquerque in New Mexico, and I wanted to go to cooking school in New York, and he talked me out of it. He's wow. like, look, if you huh. take your, your New York background, your Puerto Rican heritage, and you know, you, this type of cooking, and you go to a French cooking school, there's one in Scottsdale, Arizona, He's like, it's like a seven hour drive or an hour plane ride away from Albuquerque. Yeah. Um, you'll learn classic French oh. in the Southwest part of the country. And you already have, you know, who you are culturally. He's like, it's like three for one. He's like, yeah. and honestly, you should, you should probably get out of here. I and love I was, this guy. You know, um, it was, you know, I, I was young and, you know, it was just a whole different mindset. I had different energy back then. And he was like, I think you're better off going back to the Southwest. Boy, was he right. You know, I ended up going to Le Cordon Bleu, class of 2005, Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, 4.0 on the president's list, um, and that got me a tremendous opportunity. You know, at the time, mm. I, I was a sous chef at the Eagle Mountain Resort in Fountain Hills, Arizona, which is about mm, about a 30-minute drive northeast of Scottsdale. So it's like high, you know, super high affluent uh, yeah. a little mm -hmm. community. Money, money. Spent, you know, spent a, a, almost a couple years there, and the owner of the property I was at was going to be opening up a, a really high-level wine bar on Kona, Hawaii. And he what? took me with him. What? So I went out there for a short while, and that's when I reconnected with my wife, Lisa, who I had met in the seventh grade at Washington Middle School. Oh, wow. This I was back in Hawaii? No, she was here. I went okay. to Hawaii. Okay. And this was back in the MySpace era. <laughs> yeah, MySpace. But believe it or not, she, sent, she sent me a little message. You know, oh, she's like, oh, you're in Hawaii? I go, I am. So we just, you know, start talking. I, I came right back, and, you know, I, I've been cooking yeah. in New Mexico now straight for 15 straight, you know, over 15 years. So, you know, I always like to make sure I throw mm. it out there that I might be from New York and I might be Puerto Rican, but we got to get it crystal clear that New Mexico has made me the chef that I am today. Yeah, yeah. Man, you know, middle school and, and high school nailed. So yeah, that's... so like I, I really put, because that's just the truth. And I really, you know, for me, it's all about representing, you know, the truth, you know, and if it wasn't for without you and your families and, you know, the, the people who support me out here so many years, there's no way you know, that the things that have happened in my career would have happened. Mm, mm, love it. Well, I mean, there's all sorts of questions I've got. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm just going to throw out, but I know you have some too. But uh, maybe tell us a little bit about because, because look, we, 
I mean, I think anyone who's going to watch this has probably seen these cooking shows. Oh. And I know you've You're been right? on some of these. Hell's Kitchen being one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Cutthroat Kitchen, American Seafood Cook-Off. Like, give us a day in the, like, what is that like? And, and, and also, how staged is it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. really, you're always really, like wondering, yeah. like, I mean, come on here. All right. So, um, you know, it's for, for a, a small little background, just kind of how, how the first one even yeah. happened. You know, I was, um, I always wanted to work at, at, at the time when I first came back from Hawaii, like I, I was in my mind, I was like, I want to work at the San Diego Resort and Casino. Mm -hmm. I need to make this happen. You know, uh, Lisa and I would always go to date night at BN Sure. Cool. You know, I proposed to her there. Oh. And I, I was like, I'm, I'm going to work here. I just have it in my mind. I, I ended up working there for five years. I remember you know, that. So yeah. that yeah. that era, that time in my life, and the people who were around me, I have such a support system there, let me tell you, you know, um, really helped elevate me to when I got my first big executive chef job in Santa Fe at the Inn at Loretto, mm. where I was commuting for three years from Albuquerque. That's when um, I had auditioned for one show that I won't name, but that's really the only time I ever went out for a show. Who and needs them? So I say <laughs> that because it's interesting how it happened. It was, it was during my audition for that show that one of the producers and I kind of made a connection and she was like, look, it's not going to happen on this show, but I can, I, I can get you one with Cutthroat Kitchen. I'm, I'm on that team. Cool. You want in, just let me know. And that's how that happened. And once, uh -huh. once I got on that show with Alton Brown, the rest of them literally, I mean, the truth is I, I never applied for any of them. Yeah, then they want you. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. It, again, the phone, the phone rings on a random day. You know, do you want? Yeah, I sure would. Yeah, don't you know, say like, no. Um, so a, a day in the life, uh, Mayor, um, are you seeing like the day of a competition? Yeah, like when you're there, you know, do they give you like a week to work on a dish and then they film on Friday or is it just like, or is it you really know, hey like, man, this you is have three days minutes. and you're constantly cooking for like, you well, know. let's give the people what they want. Let's talk about House Kitchen first. Okay, okay. You know okay. I mean? All right. So, um, we only have 20 minutes, you know. I know. So, <laughs> so, um, which is truly unique to itself, you know. You, you get off the plane, um, you're, you're met by a, a PA, production assistant. They take your, your wallet, your keys, your phone, and you're literally living in their world for six weeks. Right. It's like real world, yeah. kind of like um, cooking. One million percent. <laughs> um, and if you make it past like the first couple of weeks, you're, you're there to the end, so you're locked in for the six weeks. Okay. And it's, it's literally, it could be perceived worse than being in jail because in jail you get one phone call a day. Yeah. There, um, you have no idea what time it is of the day ever. Wow. Um, and you have zero access to talking to your family, oh. your friends, you can't check on work. There is, I mean, none of that. That's crazy. So wow. you're just living um, on this big set, right? Uh, no this, windows, it's, it's a lot like in here. <laughs> yeah, just like this, you know? Yeah. And, you know, there's oh. no one prompt, no, it's not staged, Mayor. It is not staged. They mm -hmm. they throw you in there with, um, with people with similar skill sets, yeah. and there's rules, right? So there's, you know, there's people who are telling you this is the challenge, this is what you have to do. The clock starts now, wow. and you're on. There's no wow. timeout. Do it again, or well, hold okay, on. We, okay. we didn't really. Just I'm kidding. glad to know this. There yeah, me yeah. too. Like these are legit. Yeah. This is good, so good they, for my soul. Which is why know. you're basically there. <laughs> you're 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 filming without realizing it 24/7. Wow. You know, when you go to bed, there's cameras all over the rooms, in the house, in the kitchen, when you're walking down the hallway. Oh my gosh. And the only two times that you're allowed to take off your mic is when you're in the restroom. Um, that's it. Or and that's literally the, or in yeah. the shower. Shower, yeah. Yeah. So um, wow. you realize it's, it's really real when you're there and, and, you know, you're warped into that world quickly. Yeah, you get it like mentally ready. I mean, that's intense. That is intense. Yeah. yeah. So you wake, you wake up in the morning and you just have to be ready for whatever's thrown at you. Like you have to be. You have to lean into it yeah, and just know. You have to be strong up here and know that wow. this is going to be a battle. You know, all day long, you know, expect the unexpected. They're going to come at you very hard. Yeah. And you got to and you got to res respond uh, quickly. So for those who have, that haven't seen this show, or do we not want to give it away? I think by now they, people know about it. Tell us what was the outcome for you on this show. Well, um, you know, I, I made it to the, 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 end on, the, the last three on my team. You know, I got, there's 14 episodes. I got to episode 11, I think. Good job. It was, awesome. it was real That's towards awesome. the end. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a little bit of a mix of, like, survivor meets Chopped. Yeah, because you, know, yeah, you have a team aspect. Yeah. Too. yeah. So yeah. like, and you, you, you go home by your peers voting you off. Right. You know oh, what I mean? Crazy. So mm. of course, I'm very biased when I say like, you know, I, I believe I was a major threat in the house. You know, so they wanted um, you out. My, <laughs> See, I always wondered if that happened too. Yeah. It's like, we got to get rid of that guy early. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> if you watch me in the kitchen, you know, I'm winning, I'm winning challenges. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm flying through service. Right. And, and. You know, we go to the house and we're arguing. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, you're just mad because you can't hold your station down. <laughs> so like, you know, now I my, haven't seen this. Now I really want to watch now, it. Now, mind you, 
uh, imagine it's one thing to go in there, watch the show, and go, I can go in there and I can do. Mm -mm. Right. Wait three, four days, 20. I mean, you're literally filming. You're probably like awake and super alert 18, 19 hours oh my a gosh. day. So now, fast forward two weeks in. And when, when, you're, when, when you watch the you're chefs exhausted. on camera, it's like two o'clock in the morning. It's after dinner service, it's after the challenges. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you go into the room and you're not talking to a person. You're, I, I'm, I'm not staring at, at an, a human, I'm right. staring at, at, at a camera. Yeah. And I can hear the voice talking to me through the It's so like. Oh, it's so weird. Um, um, Mind yeah. mess. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a we know it's, <laughs> it's a jigsaw puzzle up there because yeah. you're sitting in this room, there's no headphones on, there's no mic check. Oh, you're crazy. just there and they're like. Watching you. Hey Mark, how was service tonight? Wow, you know, so um, weird. How do you feel Adam did on saute? So I'll probably oh, say... This is traumatic. <laughs> so traumatic. Just, I'm, I'm trying to set you up. You were probably yeah. relieved to be off the show, right? To go home and see your family and go. I know you want well, to win. I don't know. He's a fighter. Yeah, you he's are a fighter. For more. <laughs> Honestly, I'll tell you the truth. The cat carried it with me for a long time. Did you? Because I was like, you know... I, I was so close. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then just like, you got to watch the season. You got to... It's just, it's an arc. Yeah. They, they knew what they were doing Throwing me in there with those, with those, with those. Yeah, they, they kind of manipulated, but like in a for show way, yeah. you know. So they're they're kind of riding your emotions, and they're like, oh, I can yeah. see how they can manage this in a sense. But yeah, yeah brilliant. They went, yeah. Um, a few months after I got back home, I think I was out on a run one day, and I go, I get it. Like they're so smart. It I came think, to you. Yeah, you know. But in retrospect, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Yeah. So you know, had I gone in there a little bit more with a gameplay mindset, I, I probably could have gone to the end. But yeah, you know anything about me? Nothing about me is fake so right you know what you yeah, see is what you get you got to be yourself that's Correct. great yeah. i'm glad you were we can't wait to watch it jumping off of that one tell us a little bit about chopped i know that there's been a couple of uh chefs in town or at least in new mexico that have been on that show how did you feel about chopped it there's was been, amazing it there's was like amazing. a million seasons of chopped by no the way. And, and i'll be honest you know I'm, I'm super transparent i always tell the truth so i you know what a great day and a great opportunity, you know, again, that how it happened, how I got the phone call, I was just like, that would be amazing. And, yeah. you know, going out there, talking about, you know, how does it work? You know, you wake up, it's all shot in one day. You wake up, you wow. know, very early, three, four o'clock in the morning. Mm. You you meet, um, we met at a Starbucks, you know, at six o'clock in the morning, right there in Manhattan, across from Chelsea Market. Um, you're there with a the PA, you know, they're giving you coffee. And that's when you, you're meeting, your, for the first time, your competitors. And it's all shot in one day. That's crazy. They walk you across the street. Wow. You, you know, you walk through the back hallways of Chelsea Market. You go up to the, uh, the fifth floor, okay? And um, th that's it. They start micing you up. And, and it's, again, it's not, you don't know what's in the basket. You don't know yeah. anything. And uh, I came out on it. You know, I won the first round. You know, I, I, was, I, was, I was really, really just, you know, in my mind, I, I, I was going to, breeze through that I felt so confident and I made such a critical mistake in the second round um, with a vegetable oh you no know, which is now you know mm -hmm. I, I always tell my you know my chefs now always check your produce you oh. know never assume that you know an artichoke is when you when, when you open it open it's going to have the heart there it might be fibrous it might be whatever so like now I have a backup plan yeah and, and I was I was a lot younger I, I was the first chef ever from Mexico to go on the show cool um, and I kind of broke that ice and I got I got to the entree round and I made, honestly, I, I, I won't lie to you, I made, a, I made a mistake in the kitchen that cost me by not being thorough. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, but you learn from it, which is yeah. the, the most important thing you can do. If there's a mistake that happens in your life, you're like, was that me? What can I do different next time? So you're now translating those skills to your kitchen, which is incredible. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the scene in New Mexico. Like, it's so, it's so awesome, I know, to be able to, you know, name a few chefs like yourself, which is like, just a wonderful thing for like America and New Mexico to like have chefs elevated to sort of a status of, you know, we say celebrity chef, but it's really like on par with, I would say like, you know, key artists and leaders, you know, sort of defining our culture in real time. So it's an awesome thing, but what's it like on the inside? Like, do you communicate with other chefs a lot? Are you sampling or stuff? Or cutthroat? <laughs> or, uh, yeah, or is you it know, like, you know, you do your own thing and you know, it's cool. I, I mean, I'll tell you, I'm just such, I'm so impressed you know, and, and admire so many chefs out here right now who are just, in my opinion, crushing the game, you know, and it, it's almost, I always tell like, it's like living like in a movie doing this, like, it's, it's really surreal because only, I, I didn't get into this to like be on TV or, or do stuff yeah. like this, like I've only ever done this, you yeah. know, so like it's a true, you know, uh, act of love for me to cook for somebody and just to see where the industry has gone, it's just simply exciting, cool. to be honest with you, and then to, to have had the success that I've had here in the great state of New Mexico, 
you know, and, and to be able just to play a part in telling our story. Um, it just never gets old. And often, like even on the worst, I don't need to read the worst, but the longest days, because it's never really, I enjoy it. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, wow, like this is what I get to do. Like I don't have to, I get to do this. You know, um, you talk about other chefs in town, you know, I mean, ha have you been to Mesa Provisions yet in Knob Hill? I have. Steve Riley? Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. and that man is, wow. Oh, I love this. You know, um, my That's favorite great. chef ever, you know, in Albuquerque has always been Jennifer James. Right now she's yeah. at Frenchie's in Knob Hill. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, John Haas and what he's doing with the Matucci's brand out oh, here I love this. has been absolutely monumental. You know, um, it's awesome. I, I think of Marie, I, you know, my mom's, you know, and all the work she's done, yeah. you know, so many years, you know, um, her and I go way back and watching her and establish her brand. And, and, and it's just wow. Like, you know, because I, I really believe that New Mexico, right, and our bounty and where we're at geographically on the map, it's very unique, right? Uh, yeah, super look, look at our bounty out here, look at our vegetables. Our, mm, our, our mm. game meats, yeah. right? So like, I believe, I'm convinced that it's like one of the last true authentic cuisines unique to itself. Ah, we right? agree with you. We're not gonna, we're not gonna yeah, say no awesome. to that. So you know, Hotel Chaco was like, oh, you know, this is, this was built, you know, to honor this ancient international monument, Chaco Canyon, mm -hmm. right? So, and many, many years ago, and I tell this to any local who, who, who wants to hear what we're doing there, I go, your ancestors, believe it or not, were hunters by necessity. Yeah. They were out there having to go hunting, the, kill the buffalo, kill the elk, right? And then what were they doing? They were they were having to preserve that meat. For weeks you and know? months. So they were and, using yeah. aromatics and natural herbs and, you know, um, and fruits, you know, um, uh, citrus to, to marinate the meat to preserve it. Right. And then they would cook it in kettles in the ground. Oh my gosh. So mm. what we're doing now, we're calling it modern New Mexican ranch cuisine. I That's really it. all it is. You know, so we, we use a, bu a bunch of different beans and, you know, local produce and wild game meats. And we just tell the story of New Mexican ancestors, ancestors you mm. know, on, at, on this beautiful platform that, that is Hotel Chaco. Right. Yeah. Oh, my That's gosh. I'm hungry sense. right now. I know. It's we true. We could talk about this all day, but unfortunately, we have to wrap up. But um, go check him out at Hotel Chaco. Chef Quinones, thank you so much for thank being you. on the show with thank us you. today. It's been an honor. Now I'm very hungry. <laughs> You got it. Well, listen, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And remember, it takes all of us to fulfill the promise of a city that we call home. So we want to see you again next time on 1AVQ and you. Be sure and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And follow us at hashtag 1ABQ and you. If you'd like to share your own ABQ observations, experiences, or topic suggestions, reach out to us. You've been listening to 1ABQ and you.